What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. Today we're looking at the best performing Gardevoir EX deck lists from play.limitlesstcg.com tournaments. We'll be looking at the two highest performing lists from the late night 149 and the two highest performing lists from the late night 150. And also comparing these deck lists to the recently most successful pre-Paradox Rift Gardevoir EX deck list from Demetrius Eaton, he got second place at Toronto. We'll be comparing that to the new deck lists on the Trainer Help Deck Diff tool. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Check out my sponsors and affiliates in the description down below if you want to support my channel and my content. And if you're interested in Pokemon TCG coaching, or even if you don't know what that really entails and you want to find out more about it, uh, you can check out my Metafy link in the description down below as well. But let's get into this analysis of the best Gardevoir deck lists. We're going to start with uh, the two highest performing deck lists from the late night 149. Uh, so this deck list got 10th place out of 276 people. Let's look at the new cards first. So the two new cards in this deck list, I'm sorry, the three new cards in this deck list are Countercatcher, Screamtail, and Jirachi. So Countercatcher just got reprinted into standard format uh you can use it as a gust effect if you're behind on prizes and gardevoir wants to be behind on prizes typically it makes iono better it makes reversal energy work and now it also makes counter catcher work so counter catcher just works uh just fits really naturally into the deck uh, some gardevoir lists will now be only playing one boss and then one or two counter catchers uh, then we also have Screamtail in here. So Roaring Scream does 20 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon for each damage counter on this Pokemon. So uh, you can put eight, eight, uh, eight damage counters onto Screamtail using Psychic Embrace, and then Roaring Scream can snipe 160 anywhere. This is blocked by Manaphy, but not by Jirachi. Uh, they were not playing the Luxurious Cape or Bravery Charm or... Uh, the Ancient Booster <clears throat> Energy Capsule, but there are ways to buff Screamtail's HP so that you can put more damage counters on it and snipe for even more. And then the last new card from Paradox Rift they were playing here is Jirachi with the Stellar Veil. Uh, prevent all damage counters from being placed on your bench Pokemon by effects of attacks used by your opponent's basic Pokemon. This is typically going to be used to uh, avoid Sableye's Lost Mine and to avoid uh metacham v's yoga loop but uh can also be used in the mirror match because of cresselia's moon glow reverse uh let me scroll up there so you can see that this last card over here is mew uh supporter lineup we have iono boss worker pretty standard then we have three stadiums so uh collapse and artisan are pretty typical but we also have champions festival so champions festival can be pretty expensive irl which does stop some people from playing at irl but uh i think its uses vary based on the metagame uh once during each player's turn if that player has six pokemon in play they may heal 10 damage from each of their pokemon what this does is it allows gardevoir um if you attach six energy with it uh which uh with psychic embrace to the gardevoir it'll have 12 damage counters on it and you can't attach any more with psychic embrace but then if you heal with Champions Festival, you'll go down to 11 damage counters, and then you could Psychic Embrace one more time, going up to 13 damage counters. So you can get a 7th Psychic Embrace energy onto the Gardevoir that way with the Champions Festival. Um, so that's why the Champions Festival is going to see some play. Also, let's note that they're playing three rare candy, so um, maybe they're, this list isn't always trying to go for the turn two Mirage step. It seems like they're trying to rare candy a little bit more often than the lists that play two rare candy. Now, let's uh, put this into the deck diff tool. So we'll copy this and paste it over here. And let this tool do its thing. Okay, so... This is Dimitri's pre-Paradox Rift. This is uh, post-Paradox Rift. We'll just take a look here. Uh, let me make sure that you guys can see everything. I'll minimize it. Minimizing it doesn't work. 
I'm going to make my webcam a little bit smaller, actually. We'll just do that to make this easier. There we go. You don't need to look at me. We're trying to look at the list here. Okay. So, there's seven cards different. There's 53 overlapping cards. Um, we'll see that uh, both of them were actually playing the three rare candy. So, Demetrius was playing... Um, one extra collapse, but not playing the Artisan or the Champions Festival. Demetrius was also playing Mew EX for the genome hacking attack that can copy the opponent's active attack, but uh, it looks like post paradox we have uh, Espinola replacing that with Screamtail. And then Demetrius was also playing an extra worker, but uh, over here we have Espinola playing an extra stadium card. So, um, also, Jirachi has been added, which was a new card not possible to play in the list over on the left. Uh, we already talked about the uses for that. So, let's go back to this deck list. And let me give my opinions on this one specifically. Um, I have uh, gotten away from liking Zashin V, but I can talk more about that a little bit later in this video. The Screamtail is very, very good, but I don't think it's being utilized to its full potential in this deck list. I don't think you need three rare candy. Um, I'd like to see more Fog Crystal because finding energies is important. And uh, the Stadium Split's fine, but um, I don't think Champions Festival is necessary. So let's go over to the next one. Um, we got... Uh, Koichi's first place list from the late night 149 will be looking at this. So they went 13, 1, and 3 in, uh, out of 276 players. Now this one definitely has some neat differences. Uh, we'll see here that Koichi was not playing Zashin V and also not playing Cresselia. Um, two big differences. Two Pokemon that we have come to know as just as staple to the Gardevoir deck as Gardevoir itself. Uh, Zashin V is not included. Why is that? Well, they're also playing Luxurious Cape, a new card that I really, really love from Paradox Rift. It's a tool card. If the Pokemon this card is attached to doesn't have a rule box, it gets plus 100 HP, and if it's knocked out by damage, that player takes one more prize card. So, we can now boost Gardevoir up to... 240 HP. This is going to mean you can attach all 10 of your Psychic Energies with Psychic Embrace to this Gardevoir and do 360 damage. It also means Scream Tails Roaring Scream can go up to 360 damage as well. And Scream Tail not only hits the active but also the bench. So Essentially, Zashin V has been cut from this deck list because you can turn Gardevoir or Screamtail into something that's sometimes even better than a Zashin V because Screamtail can also hit the bench. Now, the downside of Luxurious Cape Gardevoir over Zashin is that you are using a Gardevoir to attack instead of Zashin, which is a basic Pokemon. But it's okay because this combo is usually being used on the very last turn of the game, so that Gardevoir won't even have a chance to be KO'd. Um, you'll see that they're playing three Super Rod. That's because there's no Zashin. They're going to be relying on reusing the Gardevoir and the Screamtail uh, very much in this deck list. There's also no Cresselia, right? So the attackers really are just Gardevoir and Screamtail, which is why you have the third Super Rod. Also, this is going to be important for later. Note that there's one less Battle VIP pass, so we see players starting to rely a little bit less on Battle VIP pass uh, because this player is going to be really steering into the Mirage step on turn two game plan. And it's a lot more safe to rely on the Mirage Step Turn 2 game plan in this upcoming metagame, at least the way it's uh, developing right now, because there are decks that are going to be choosing to go second way more often than there were in the previous format. So um, even if the Guard of Our player loses the coin flip, depending on who they're paired up against and what deck that person's playing, they might still get to go first, even though they lost the coin flip. And Gardevoir wants to go first, so on turn two, they can just evolve and use Mirage Step. Uh, we'll see here, no Cresselia, but there is Radiant Greninja, there is Mew. They're playing both Manaphy and Jirachi. 
uh, no Cresselian, no Zacian. And um, the last interesting card to talk about here is the three Avery. So Avery, um, no workers, but three Avery. So draw three and then put your opponent down to a bench of three. Why is this good in Gardevoir? Why is this here all of a sudden in Gardevoir? Well, uh, we have Screamtail now, right? I do think Avery works a lot better if you're playing Screamtail and Jirachi, but essentially the opponent's going to bench Manaphy now because of Screamtail. So in the mirror match, you're going to make your opponent choose between Manaphy or a Ralts. But if you're playing Screamtail and Cresselia, you're going to make your opponent choose between Jirachi, Manaphy, and a Ralts. Like, what do they keep when you use this Avery? Um, and then because of Countercatcher, you can Avery them, they choose, and then they think their bench is safe, and then you Countercatcher up a Curlia or a Gardevoir and knock it out. Um, so Avery is really, really good in the mirror match, but it's good in other matchups too. It can be good against Mew, make them discard some Genesex, um, and really stifle their drawing for the rest of the game. It can be good against Chi and Pal, make them choose between like the second Bibberil, the second Frigibax, the Radiant Greninja, things like that. Um, yeah, so the Avery can come up in a lot of matchups. And let's actually look at Koichi's matchups and see what they lost to. They lost to a Maridon and then never hit another Maridon. Couple IDs. Um, but yeah, they beat everything else. So let's see if they they faced a mirror match here. Just one mirror match. Uh they ended up beating DTE Mew in the finals, it looks like. Let me see if this is DTE Mew should be yeah they beat dte mu in the finals um i'm sure avery helps there okay yeah so now let's uh do the comparison between this and dimitri's list with the deck diff tool um is this gonna work i might have to refresh the page Okay, there we go, it worked. So there's 12 differences between these deck lists, between Dimitri's second place from Toronto and Koichi's from the late night 149. So a lot of differences now. We're getting to more than 10 cards different in these deck lists. Of course, one of them is pretty small. One of them is just a different Ralts, so that's not really too big of a deal. So you could technically say 11 cards different. If you don't want to uh, count Ralts, like just a different kind of Ralts. Uh, that's such a minute difference, but can definitely matter playing the memory skip Ralts sometimes. So here we see the three Avery, the two counter catcher, super rod, luxurious cape, multiple artisans, multiple artisans, of course, can help make up for one less battle of VIP and also a little lower on the fog crystal side. We'll see Demetrius was playing four fog crystal and four battle VIP pass, no artisan. So it makes sense that over here, Koichi adapted the artisans to make up for the little bit lacking uh, basic Pokemon search. And now we're going to go over to the second place list from Late Night 150. Okay, we'll open the image here. And it starts getting really interesting here. So we'll see some of the same differences. We'll see Screamtail. We'll see Jirachi. We see that luxurious cape. Also, three Shining Arcana Gardevoirs and three Super Rods um, and no Zacian V. So really, really trying to focus into this single prize attacking style of deck. Also playing one Avery. Also playing Professor Toro Scenario, which this is the first one we'll be looking at with Professor Toro Scenario. Uh, this card is essentially like the card AZ from the XY, area, uh, XY era. Put one of your Pokemon in play into your hand and discard all cards attached to that Pokemon. This can be really helpful for a multitude of reasons with Gardevoir. So they're not playing Collapse Stadium in this deck list. They're playing Pokemon League Headquarters. So if you want to pick up a Gardevoir EX to present a fully single prize board you can do that with Tauros if you want to pick up a damaged Pokemon you could do that if you want to pick up a Pokemon that has energy on it that you need to get into the discard to attach it to a different Pokemon you can even do that with Professor Tauros um, if you get a Pokemon stuck in the active with block Snorlax you can use Professor Tauros so it's a very multi-purpose card um, I really like it in the deck list 
Uh, we also see them playing, like I said, the luxurious Cape Screamtail Triple Shining Arcana Gardevoir, which is just a really, really strong repertoire of single prize attacking options. Um, and also, let's note that they're playing zero Battle VIP Pass. They're playing four Level Ball, four Fog Crystal, three Ultra Ball, two Rare Candy, really focusing on the turn two Mirage Step play. Now, let's... Um, I think we can actually skip the deck diff here for this one, just because next we're going to go on to my deck list. Um, I placed fourth in the late night 150. I was the highest placing Gardevoir in that one. And I, uh, my deck list, actually, I faced that list we just looked at in top eight. And our deck lists were very, very similar, actually. Um, so... Yeah, let's take a look at this. So I was also playing the Triple Shining Arcana Gardevoir, the Screamtail, the Luxurious Cape. I played Cresselia as well as Screamtail. I did not play Jirachi, so that was a difference in my list for sure. I played zero Battle VIP Pass as well, and I played four Level Ball, four Fog Crystal, four Ultra Ball. I think this was really, really good for thinning out the deck in the mid to late game. Also, this was the only search I needed in most games. I never really needed a Battle VIP Pass, except for my losses against Fusion Strike Mew. Those are where Battle VIP Pass would have helped. Um, and my one loss against Turbo Loss Zone Box. So in those more aggressive uh, matchups where they can have an early Moonlight Shuriken or against Mew that's playing Ice Q and they can snipe your bench, those are kind of where you miss the battle VIP pass. But I was really focusing on that turn two Mirage step like I talked about because I expected to play against a lot of decks that will let me go first even when I lose the coin flip. We'll see here that I was also playing Professor Toros. I was also playing Zinnia's Resolve because Zinnia's Resolve just draws you an absurd amount of cards um, and helps you find some of those uh, combo pieces that you might need or even just help you draw into uh, cards that you play less of. So like the Reversal Energy, the One Collapse Stadium, the One Counter Catcher, uh, the One Luxurious Cape. Zinnia's Resolve is really great at helping you draw into those when you have a very thin deck. I played Worker. Um, I did consider dropping the Zacian V for an Avery right before the tournament, but uh, I just left the Zacian V in there. I used the Zacian V optimally, like by choice, one single time throughout 17 rounds of the tournament. So um, right after the tournament, I cut Zacian V for an Avery. That is the number one change I suggest making to this deck list is cutting Zacian V for an Avery. And then you could also consider cutting uh, Fourth Iono or maybe Worker or maybe Zinnia or maybe Cresselia for second counter catcher. But I really like the Cresselia and the Screamtail because it forces your opponent to respect both the damage counters and the bench damage. So if they have Manaphy and Jirachi, they'll likely play both to defend against that. And if they don't have one of those, then you're going to have a field day sniping in whichever way uh, your opponent can't protect against. So let's do the deck diff tool here um, for Dimitri's deck list compared to my deck list. This might just take a second to load on the deck diff tool. No, it actually did it really quick this time. So we'll see 11 card differences here. One, of course, being the Ralts. One being the third Shining Arcana Gardevoir. And like I said, I did play the Zacian V, but in uh, right after the tournament, I've cut the Zacian V for an Avery. Um, and then, of course, the Battle VIP passes are going to be a big difference. Um, like I mentioned, the Battle VIP pass can be something that you miss against very aggressive decks, but overall, I was able to do pretty well in the tournament without the Battle VIP passes and with more cards that are going to help me out throughout the entire game, uh, like the 4 Ultra Ball, the 4 Fog Crystal, the 4 Level Ball, and then also just a lot more um, power really. So in place of those battle VIP passes, I have cards like Luxurious Cape, Counter Catcher, Professor Toro's uh, Scenario, a third Shining Arcana Guard of our cards that actually do things instead of just battle VIP pass, which is very much front loading the deck and um, setting up your board. But I realized when building this deck a few days ago that I didn't really need to set up my board if I'm just going to go for Mirage Step turn two. All I need is like a couple Ralts and I'm good to go. Um, so that's what went into that decision making with the deck building to exclude the battle VIP passes. Um, so currently, do I think my deck list is the best Gardevoir deck list? I 
am not sure that it is just objectively the best, but I would say uh, Koichi's deck list, which was the number one performing in the late night 149, and my deck list, minus Zashin plus Avery, which was the best performing deck list in the late night 150, are my two front runners for the best guard of our deck list. So um, if you want to find these exports and this page that I'm looking at here, you can simply go to play.limitlisttcg.com and then go to, uh, so when you go to play.limitlisttcg.com, you'll click on Pokemon trading card game, you'll click on decks, and then you'll click on Gardevoir, and then this will show you Gardevoir decks from the Paradox Rift legal format, or you can even go just look at tournaments, completed, and then click Late Night 150, and you can look at this. You can even find things like the matchups I played in that tournament, um, and then you can go to 149 and find the matchups that Koichi played against in that tournament if you want to look at all of that stuff. But uh, So yeah, the, those are the four best performing guard of our deck list so far in the online tournaments. Of course, we'll have the LAIC coming up, and then a little while after that, we'll have the San Antonio Regionals. But as far as online events, I think these guard of our decks represent what the community is uh, thinking about guard of our EX in the developing metagame. And like I said, for my deck list, I would just cut the Zacian for an Avery, um, or you could also cut it for Jirachi if you uh, really want a Jirachi in your deck. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Wanted to make this real quick going over the best guard of our EX deck list for Paradox Rift. I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.